Good afternoon. Yeah, I welcome you to my presentation. We will continue on with the topic where now the topic will be basically the voice quality assessment for diagnosis and treatment of voice disorders. So we will be continue on uh, basically with how to replace humans with machines. That is generally the topic of my presentation. So as we all know, uh, speech is the most common way of communication between us humans. And with the advent of speech recognition technologies, it is slowly becoming also more popular with communicating with machines. The whole speech as a signal can be basically, I mean, uh, produced or interpreted as a model, which consists of two parts. Do we have like a laser pointer? No, sorry. Oh, of course we do. Top one. The top one. Yeah. So basically the two parts are the voice source and the vocal tract. The voice source are our vocal cords, which open and close periodically and produce the voice source signal, which is then frequency modulated in the vocal tract, which acts as a series of resonators. And it gets then radiated out through lips, and that's our speech. So fairly simple. But we all know that the speech itself contains far more information than just the content, just to name the few, but probably everybody would be able to tell I'm a man, even without looking at me. If they knew me, they would be able to tell my identity. Emotions may be slightly trickier, but among other things, we can also often tell the health status of a person. So. If all of these parts, the voice source and the vocal tract, are uh, functioning properly, we produce the normal voice, healthy voice, or what we also say, the modal voice. However, it is estimated that about three to nine percent of the population suffers from a certain or some kind of voice disorders, but only about one percent of them seek treatment. So. When we talk about voice disorders, what do we talk about? It is basically anything else but the modal voice. So people who suffer from some speaking troubles. The voice disorders can, are usually divided to be either organic or functional. The organic ones are basically also structural or neurogenic. The neurogenic ones are sort of popular right now to research. Those are due to diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson, or sclerosis, which basically change or uh, make alterations to your nervous system and you are not producing normal voice. Another problem is we might often experience people in our profession are functional voice disorders because these are result of improper or inefficient use of voice which often uh, is the case for people who excessively use their voice, such as teachers, lecturers, singers, or salespersons. All of these people, it is estimated about 40% of them, suffer from some kind of voice disorder. So what's the usual way how uh, it is still done nowadays, the treatment and the diagnosis? Basically, it is done through the voice assessment. When the people come to the hospital, there is a trained speech pathologist who uh, asks the person to record some recordings, you know, he then listens to it, grades it according using some standardized uh, listening protocol, and basically produces some grades for that person. The protocol itself uh, usually defines some sort of, or uh, some parameters which the listener is supposed to listen for. Uh, usually or very often nowadays, these are parameters such as breathiness, in the voice, strain, or roughness. There is, however, one problem with this approach, or multiple problems. Uh, first of all, the grading is subjective. If you take multiple speech pathologists, they will produce different assessment of voice, different grades. That's one problem, and second, it is very time consuming. Because in order to produce uh, statistically significant uh, uh, labels, you have to listen to it multiple times, multiple speech pathologies. It's a lot of time, of time of work for just one, basically, utterance or to evaluate one person. So we come to the objective of our work, which is basically to automatize the process by algorithms and model, which would make the grading objective. The purpose or the, of our research is basically uh, is twofold. It is either to detect a voice disorder, a presence of certain parameter in a voice, or infer the severity grade. 
So if we talk about uh, these voice disorders and their qualities, there are usually the three defined. Very simply, breathy voice is a voice when your vocal folds, which we saw, are closing periodically. Do not close properly, but there is, an, uh, there is always some gap. So excessive air leaks through, forms a turbulent airflow, and the resulting speech sounds very noise-like. Then there is a strained noise, which is the case when people try to compensate for this incomplete closure. So they strain their muscles in the, uh, in the chest and the neck area, and it sounds as if a person was carrying uh, or was trying to speak while carrying a heavy object. And then there is a rough voice, which is sort of like a perceived irregularity when the voice is uh, not in amplitude, but in frequency, jumping up and down. So I have some examples for you. Year ago. So this is a recording of a person who is graded basically on a scale of 0 to 100 as 3, 3, 4. So basically no disorder. This is something we would probably call a medium disorder. We were away a year ago. You can clearly hear that the person is definitely breathy. And then there is severe disorder. How hard did he hit you? So this is basically what we try to find out in our signal. So how do we go around it? Basically, first of all, is always the data collection, which is mainly uh, through our collaboration with the Center for Laryngeal Surgery and Voice Rehabilitation in Boston. These are the people, these are the speech pathologists who run this clinic. Uh, when the people come in, they record the data afterwards. They grade the data using this st some standardized protocol which produces the labels for us. The, and the labels serve as basically targets we try to get using our method. So here in this uh, picture you can see a sort of setup in a very complicated way when it is not only speech that's being recorded but also other speech related signal that are that were found to be useful such, such as neck surface accelerometer which basically measures the movement of your skin or electroglottograph or oral wave flow. So after we get the data, we use the standard process of extracting the proper features which we found or which, are, uh, which we know are usable for the process. And then we basically train the classifiers or uh, the regressors using uh, the methods such as Gaussian mixture model, super vector machines, uh, DNNs. And basically the point is to get either what type of disorder is present in the voice or try to infer the grade. So how are we doing so far? Basically we are pretty good in classification of breathy, modal, uh, breathy and modal voice. We have, let's say, somewhat good in detecting strain in voice fairly bad at rough, detecting rough voice. As far as the regression scores, uh, which is also uh, kind of interesting to see, is that in terms of 1 to 100, the average mistake in our error is about 15 points. So if the, po if the person is supposed to be 30, then we are about plus minus 15 around that. So that is basically the conclusion of my work. Uh, so as you can see, the voice quality assessment uh, using machines is, uh, I believe, uh, uh, has a great potential in the future since we will be able to basically make the task easier for speech pathologists. They won't have to grade everything and uh, take this harder task and focus more on the actual treatment. And here is the picture of my colleague in front of one of our clusters we use for uh, training our models. So thank you for attention.